Today let us see about horizontal jaw relation. As we saw before, by definition, it is nothing but the anteroposterior relationship of the mandible to the maxilla. That is the side to side relationship in horizontal plane. The horizontal relation can be either centric or eccentric relation. What is centric relation to begin with? To put in simple words, centric relation is that relation of the maxilla and mandible when the condylar part of the mandible articulates with the thinnest avascular portion of the articular disc. It is also the most retruded physiologic relation of the mandible to the maxilla from which the individual can make lateral movements. But by GPT definition, it is defined as the maxillomandibular relationship in which the condyles articulate with the thinnest avascular portion of their respective discs with the complex that is the condylar complex in the anterior superior position against the shapes of the articular eminences and this position is independent of tooth contact. Now what is the significance of centric relation CR? Before that we need to know about MIP maximal intercuspal position. To put in simple words it is the best fit of the teeth that is the complete intercuspation of the opposing teeth which is not dependent on the condylar position. Now the CR and MIP need not coincide with each other in natural dentition but in a complete edentulous patient it is better if MIP and CR correlates because it has to correlate to avoid any deflective contacts in CR. Similarly when recording the orientation jaw relation that is the relationship of the maxilla to the skull cranium. The face bow transfer was made in the centric relation that is the posterior border most position of mandible to correlate with that maxillary position which was transferred to the articulator the mandible should be recorded in the centric relation and we should also keep in mind that centric relation can vary with vertical dimension therefore after determining the proper vd centric relation should be recorded we should also keep in mind that since cr is a border position it can be recorded reproduced and verified over several period of time and it is also the most comfortable position, convenient position and mandible tends to return to this position during all its functional movements. Keeping all these significance of CR in mind, let us start with how to retrude the mandible to get CR. As we saw, to record CR, the mandible must be retruded first of all. It could be either done by passive methods or active methods. In the passive methods, the patient himself is guided to push his mandible backwards. Whereas in active method, the doctor guides the patient. The doctor himself pushes the mandible with his fingers. While using the passive method, the patient is either instructed to relax and pull back the jaw and close on his back teeth swallow and close or protrude and retrude the mandible repeatedly you can also tilt the head backwards while doing the following exercises in using active method the patient will receive the physical assistance from the dentist to retrude his mandible one of the famous method is the dawson's bimanual palpation now after retruding the mandible either static method functional method or graphic method is used to record CR. Static method includes either the use of wax occlusal rim or interocclusal check records. But primarily wax occlusal rim is the most commonly used method to record CR. Using the above instructions of either the passive method or the active method after retruding the mandible with the occlusal rims inside the oral cavity of the patient the occlusal rims have to be stabilized in the centric relation. For stabilization, either heat can be used or pins can be used. But since both have a risk of injury to the patient, the preferred method is the nick and notch method to stabilize the maxillary and mandibular occlusal rims after recording the CR. In the molar region of the maxillary occlusal rim, a notch is created. And the premolar region of the maxillary occlusal rim, a nick is created. In the mandibular occlusal rim of molar region, a trough is created. 
and after inserting the maxillary and mandibular occlusal rims into the patient's oral cavity the patient is asked to retrude the mandible as trained before after retruding this position of the maxillary and mandibular occlusal rims are sealed with either the help of soft wax or zinc oxide eugenol impression paste which can be previously loaded in the trough of the mandibular occlusal rim before inserting after the wax soft wax hardens or the impression material sets the set fixed maxillary and mandibular occlusal rim is removed together and articulated This nickel notch method is recommended for sealing of the occlusal rims because there is less resistance to closure and movement during sealing is tackled. The second method is the interocclusal check record. As the name suggests, it is used to verify or check the centric jaw relation at the time of try and verification or denture insertion. The maxillary trial denture is inserted in the patient's mouth. and the recording medium is usually like aloe wax which is loaded onto the occlusal and incisal surface of the teeth in the mandibular occlusal rim that's all about the static methods used to record cr the functional methods and the graphic methods will be dealt in the part 2 video stay tuned see you soon